Mali is the African story that's dominating headlines today. There are three things you need to know about what is happening in Mali. First, it is small in population, less than 16 million people, landlocked, and desperately poor. The expansion of the Sahara to the south, probably abetted by climate change, means that a large portion of its population faces regular food shortages, even famine. Mali regularly figures in UN appeals for famine relief in the Sahel. The north of the country is mostly desert, sparsely populated, is dominated by the Toreg people, who regard themselves as a part, perhaps superior to, the rest of the population. It is the site of many of the great monuments of African Islamic civilization, such as Timbuktu. The South dominates the economy and the politics of the country. Northern resentment of Southern domination is long-standing. Government promises of federalism or increased local autonomy over the past 20 years have regularly been made and broken. Second, Mali was regarded as a model democracy with regular elections and the transfer of authority from one elected political leader to his successor. Last year, this ostensibly democratic government was overthrown by a colonel who had been American trained. The coup was widely welcomed and the military remained popular. This coup showed how superficial the connection was between the country's elites that managed the elections and the people they governed. Third, a low-level, long-term insurrection in the North based on regional and ethnic grievances was transformed by the influx of Gaddafi's former mercenaries and their weapons. They also brought with them a radical vision of Islam. With this new firepower, they rapidly overcame the Malian army. The Bamako government's failure to put down the insurgency was the cause of the military coup. Gaddafi's men, often called Arabs because of the North African origins of many of them, and a quasi-criminal, quasi-radical Islamic group called Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, qu quickly outmaneuvered the local rebels whose aim was to merely establish an independent state. In power, they imposed a radical Islamic regime, complete with the grisly Sharia punishments of amputations and stonings. They supported themselves by criminal activity, including narcotics trafficking. It remains unclear to what extent they were part of the international jihadist movement, though radical training camps and other such facilities appeared. Mali's neighbors saw the emergence of this radical Islamic state as a threat to their own security. Under the auspices of the economic community of West African states, Mali's neighbors started to put together an African force to restore Bamako's authority in the north. It received formal UN Security Council authorization. It was anticipated that the force would be ready to move in September. However, in direct response to appeals from Bamako, which feared the rebels would soon take over the entire country, France intervened militarily over the past weekend. It remains to be seen what the consequences will be. Initially, the intervention looked successful, with the Islamists falling back, but already there have been setbacks. There is also the risk that Western intervention on behalf of a government that came to power through a coup will stimulate an anti-Western reaction in other parts of the Sahel.